welcome to NTP series again. I think this is our second lecture, and in the last lecture we have studied the concepts of uh, special theory of relativity, which are needed for this uh, relativistic quantum mechanics. So in this second lecture, I think we will be first deriving the clean golden relativistic quantum mechanical equation for relativistically uh, free particle. And uh, in the later on, once this uh, free particle scenario is discussed. Based on that, we can develop our further concepts to incorporate the interactions among the free particles. So, I welcome again you for uh, the second lecture of NTP series. And in this, uh, we first derive the free particle KG equations. Welcome. So, uh, with this background of special theory of relativity, the symbol wise, Initial frame of reference, non initial frame of reference, metric tenses, del operator, del square operator, all this concept which we have just learned, we have just recollected, now are useful in deriving the relativistic quantum mechanical equation. So, to start with, I first derive the relativistic quantum mechanics or the relativistic. Schrodinger equation. So, I write this is the relativistic Schrodinger equation. And obviously, to start with the simplest case, I consider first a case of free particle. Since it is a free particle, so there is no interaction and no interaction means no potential energy. Basically, the potential energy is 0 and the particle is having only kinetic energy. Right? So, whatever we have done in the case of non-relativistic uh, Schrodinger equation for a free particle, same methodology we will adopt to derive relativistic Schrodinger equation for the free particle. And if you remember, there the operator correspondence that we have used for say linear momentum operator, we write linear momentum operator P as minus IH cut nebula and the energy operator sometimes also known as a Hamiltonian operator, this we write as IH cut del by del T. So obviously if I write now Schrodinger equation for a free particle in the case of a non-relativistic particle then the energy of a particle can be written like this. And if I use this operator correspondence here, then it is very easy to prove that it is this IH cut del by del T is equals to, again I write this H cut square by 2M nebula square with negative sign. So this is the operator form of non-relativistic Schrodinger equation for a particle. And if you know the wave function describing a particle, let us say psi as a function of r and t, then this is your famous Schrodinger equation for non-relativistic case, where psi is the wave function describing a state of a particle, non-relativistic particle, which is freely moving. Now, the same ideology we want to use while deriving the relativistic Schrodinger equation. But we know that in relativity, that space and time coordinate are equivalent. Space and time, they are treated on an equal footing. If they are treated equally, then the equation involving this space and time should have the equal order of differentiation. For example, in the case of non-relativistic case, the time operator is involved one time. So, it is a first order derivative with respect to time. But with respect to space coordinate, now this Schrodinger equation is having second order. This is a clear imbalance between the equivalence of space and time. They should be appeared equally in the given equation. And therefore, this deficit of 
only one time differentiation with respect to time and two time differentiation with respect to space coordinate is the hindrance, is the problem with the non-relativistic Schrodinger equation when applied to a case of relativistic Schrodinger equation. The very first requirement is that both of them, space and time, should appear in an equal way to the Schrodinger equation. And obviously, then you are having two choices. Either both appear as a second order differential equation or they both appear as the first order. This case, when you are dealing with a, both appearing as a second order differential equation, that is described by famous clean golden equation, whereas the first order differential equation was derived by the great physicist P. A. M. Dirac. So this is known as the Dirac Schrodinger equation. So obviously this space and time equivalence prohibits the direct use of non-relativistic Schrodinger equation for the case of relativistically high speed particles. And therefore, we now in a position to derive the two cases, either the both time and space coordinates appear as a second order differentiation in the Schrodinger equation, or they will appear as a first order differentiation in the uh, relativistic equation. In fact, this second order differential equation, which is popularly known as a KG equation, was derived by Schrodinger himself. Schrodinger has already realized after giving the non-relativistic Schrodinger uh, this equation in 1926, soon he realized that this has a deficit, this problem of non-equivalence of space and time. He himself has derived the second order differential equation with respect to time and the space. But its implications and the inferences in detail are discussed by the clean and golden. So popularly, it is known as a clean golden equation. So in the first, uh, first part, we will derive the KG equation, the second order differential equation for a relativistically high speed free particle. And therefore, and then later on, we derive the Dirac equation. And interestingly, both are conveying something different to physics and they both are applicable in the two different situations. These two different situations are the fundamental difference between the observed physical quantity in the nature. Nature is giving a physical quantities in the two different, uh, showing the two different properties. One is derived, described by KG equation successfully, whereas other demands the use of Dirac equation. So it's a very interesting aspect that we will uh, develop when we discuss both of them together towards the end. And we will also realize that there is some common features in both of them. They both are dealing with a situation which is uh, a system having the large number of particles and therefore automatically the concept of what we call in the classical mechanics, the field theory that can be the obvious outcome of this theory. In fact, KG equation or Dirac equation, they favors the concept of field theory. So it's a very interesting aspect that we try to derive. But obviously, first we restrict ourselves to the KG equation, second order differential equation. So now we derive the KG equation for a free particle and then uh, uh, we learn about how to understand the Dirac equation. So I go with this uh, another slide and I try to derive what we call as the KG equation. But again, I restrict myself first to the case of a free particle. And then obviously if situation arises, I can involve the potential or the interaction among the particles. Right? Since it's a free particle, so obviously free particle has a kinetic energy. So the total energy will be kinetic energy. For a non-relativistic case, this total energy can be written as 
p square by 2m. But for the relativistic case, this form is not possible, is not allowed. In fact, we can derive this using the special theory of relativity, which I think all of you must have derived in the lower standard. So I just write directly that the uh, total energy of a system can be written like that. E square can be written as C square P square plus M zero raised to two C raised to four. Again, C is the speed of light in vacuum. P the linear momentum of a particle who is moving with a relativistically high speed and m0 is the rest mass of a particle. So this is your equation describing the kinetic energy of the relativistic free particle. And obviously now this expression we write in terms of the operator correspondence. So instead of E again I write I h cut del by del t. So this will be like this. And here instead of p again I will write my uh, minus I h cut nebula expression. So what I have should I write directly? So it will be c square h cut square nebula square and this are all uh, written as m0 square c raised to 4 and in fact this is nothing but your again I can write this as minus h cut square del square by del t square. Interestingly with a simple substitution e as i h cut del by del t and p as minus i h cut nebula we are able to write the operator correspondence of relativistic kg equation and don't forget here t appears as a second order differential space coordinate is also appearing as a second order differential sign. So this is allowed equation because space and time are appearing equally. And now if the state of a system, state of a particle is defined by some function, say wave function R and T, then if this operator operates on this wave function, we are readily obtaining the kg equation. So my kg equation for a free particle moving with a relativistic high speed will look like this. So it will be like del square psi by del t square equals to c square h cut square nebula square psi rt and of course this part which is due to the relativistic correction that we write like this. So this is my famous clean golden relativistic equation. I can do some cancellation. I can divide both sides by c square h cut square and then I take this nebula square on left side so as to arrange it in a specific form. What I will have dividing c square h cut square on both sides and rearranging the term finally I get this nebula square comes here this will it's minus is taken so it will be 1 by c square del square by del t square this side term I can write commonly right on the other side whatever left I have I write m0 square c square is 1 c square is gone so it will be like this. So simple mathematical form is available. Again, if you just go to the, our first slide, if I just uh, recollect last time, last to last time maybe, uh, what we have derived is the form for the differential operator and uh, differential operator, if you just remember, this is what we call as the Laplacian, uh, sorry, DL inversion operator. 1 minus 1 by C square, del square by del T square and nebula square. So if you just uh, look at this part, then you realize that this is nothing but your DL inversion operator. So obviously this equation, the left side, I can write in very short as the DL inversion operator, psi RT equals to m0 square 
c square by h cut square and of course it operates on this. It is the same equation only the symbols I have changed. So basically this equation is known as your EG equation. Uh, in some of the textbook you may write even this left side here it is the same thing. So uh, let me write that way also. I go to the next page maybe. So here uh, the same equation I can write in this form m0 c square h cut square and if you are using it in a, a natural unit system in a natural unit system this and this both are one and therefore the same equation the klein golden equation in natural unit system can be written like this it's a simple small sweet equation which we have derived Very interesting outcome of this is that if you consider a particle whose rest mass is zero, uh, the first instance it appears something strange that how can a particle has a no mass? Because by definition, classical definition, particle is defined as a, it's a point-like object endowed with mass. So I'm talking about a particle which has no rest mass. And the example is now well known in the quantum mechanics. Let's say you have the photon. We know that the photon, it is the energy quanta. This quantum of energy is behaving like a particle. Your Planck's theory who proposed the concept of photon, the quantized nature of energy, that photon has no rest mass. And obviously because of uh, zero rest mass, it is moving with a speed of light. Its uh, speed is uh, touching the speed of light. So obviously it's a relativistic particle. So if you consider a photon whose rest mass is zero and therefore its speed is c only, then this equation allows such particle to be described. Only thing is that if rest mass is zero, so the kg equation for photon can be written simply as this. And if I go back to the description of the uh, expression for this DL inversion operator, then you remember that this is nothing but nebula square and that one minus C square term if I take on the other side, then this is nothing but your famous Maxwell equation. Only difference is that this is a wave equation. So this and of course psi is the wave function. So basically your klein golden relativistic equation very simply allows the particles with a no rest mass and they can be described by the Maxwell's wave equation. So Maxwell's wave equation can also be derived using this uh, kg equation. Before we just close up uh, this uh, derivation of the klein golden equation. Let us also uh, note down another possibility. Whatever equations which we have derived, in which space coordinate we have considered as a plus or time uh, plus or minus, and time coordinate we have considered as the plus. But other possibility is also there, and therefore, like this equation, we can also have which is equally allowed equation that instead of minus we can have m0 square plus because they are all equivalent. So it is just another way of writing the equation. So this is the same as this equation. Only difference is that the space and time coordinate which we have considered, they have a opposite 
sine. But the physics does not change even with this equation. And the lastly, we note down this DL emulsion operator is invariant under the Lorentz transformation. If this is invariant under relativistic transformation, then if your psi is a scalar, not a vector quantity, it's not a vector function, it's a scalar function, then this equation, either equation 1, uh, A, A dash or A triple dash B, they are Lorentz invariant. Then all equations A, A dash are Lorentz invariant. So in order to obey your Lorentz invariance by KG equation, what it demands that your psi function, the wave function, the state function describing your particle or a system must be a scalar quantity. As against that, we will realize and we will see when we derive the Dirac equation, the state function describing a particle in the case of Dirac equation, which is nothing but your one order, first order, time and space derivative equation there the vector function is used. So this invariant property of the DL emulsion operator and imposing the condition that this KG equation should be Lorentz invariance requires your state function, a function describing your particle, a system that should be the scalar function. So this is in fact a condition imposed by the Lorentz invariance property of special theory of relativity that which kind of wave function you should use while describing such particles and it says that you have to use the scalar form for function psi. In the next part what we will do we have obtained this kg equation this is the second order time and space differential equation with a scalar state function we now we will be deriving the solution of it and it is quite obvious that whenever you are describing a free particle then the free particle wave function is written as a plane view whenever there is a uh, bending or say, uh, say spherical wave for example not plane then that spherical nature of the wave front is related to the some kind of interaction. But if the particle is a plane, then its wave front remains, uh, if particle is a free, sorry, then the, its wave front describing the particle remains plane. So throughout, without any interaction when particle is moving, it is uh, described by the plane wave. So in the next part, what we will do, we will consider the psi or the scalar wave function as a plane wave and we try to solve this equation. We derive the solution of the clean Gordon equation using plane wave function. That we will do in the next part. Friends, I hope you have enjoyed this lecture. I, I try to give all the mathematical steps which are required to uncover the physics of this topic. Uh, basically, we, are, we have derived the KG equation for a free particle which is moving relativistically uh, high speed at high speed. And at the end, we are able to see that uh, the KG equation is Lorentz invariant. And based on that, in the next lecture, we try to go for the particle which is having interactions. Uh, don't forget to share and like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this lecture and of course if you have any doubts, if you have any queries or you want to give a feedback, you can definitely give it to the comment section. So I thank you all and welcome you for the next lectures. Thank you.